In this video, we're going to show you how to install ignition coil boots on your Nissan Frontier located at the bottom side of each ignition coil. With the hood open, we're going to use a 10 millimeter wrench to get loose in this nut and disconnect the ground terminal off of our battery. Go ahead and wiggle that off and just tuck that aside. We use our flathead screwdriver. Loosen the hose clamp here. And we're going to follow this over to the throttle body. Let's go ahead and loosen this one here as well. Now, if we follow this over just to the driver's side back portion, there is a hose clamp. We're going to use a pair of pliers. Move that hose clamp back. I'm going to go ahead and twist that hose gently. Just break it free and pull that off. On the center right here, we have the engine upper cover or plenum. There's two 10 millimeter bolts. Use a socket, loosen. Once those are loose, you should be able to grab that. There's a rubber grommet on the driver's side piece right here. So just pull that off and set it aside. Remove the two 10 millimeter bolts here. With those removed, gently grab this here, lift it up. And we're gonna work this off of our throttle body. Follow it across to the air box. Pull that off. Remove that and set it aside. On the side of our throttle body, we have the electrical connector. I'm gonna pinch the tab here and we're gonna pull that connector off. If you need to, you can use a small screwdriver, push in on this tab and just gently work that connector. Pop that connector off and just pull that back a little bit. On the bottom of our throttle body, we have two coolant ports right here. We're gonna use our pliers Slide these clamps back. Gently twist the hoses and pull those off. Now it may lose a little bit of coolant from here. You can put a catch can or a bucket underneath. On the top right here, we have another hose running across. and slide that clamp up. You want to be careful when removing these hoses because this is plastic underneath here. You just want to gently grab that hose and just twist it just to break the hose free. If you have a pair of hose pliers like this, it's going to work out best. Okay, grab that, twist that, and we want to pull this off. Now there's a connector right here. There's a little push tab on there. You can try pinching that tab and pulling this off, or you can use a pair of pliers and gently squeeze, and you can hear it unclick and pull that off. Using a 12 millimeter socket, loosen this bracket bolt. I'm just gonna set that aside. I'm gonna put that bolt right back in there. Now on the back side of the intake manifold, there is this big wire harness right here, and there are the plastic connectors. Just use a pair of pliers, pinch the little tabs here together, and push that through. We're gonna do that on the other side here as well. Put 
underneath the throttle body and a little bit further back, you're gonna find a 12 millimeter bolt anchoring the intake to a bracket. Got to remove that bolt and set that aside. Now right behind that forward bolt on this bracket underneath our intake, there's another 12 millimeter bolt right here. I'm gonna use our gear wrench on that. You could probably get a ratchet in there. On the passenger side rear of the intake, there is a vacuum hose right here. Move that hose clamp back. Be careful with this port here. It is plastic as well. We don't wanna break that off. So use your hose pliers, gently squeeze it and twist it. Pull it while you're twisting this back. Do not bend it. Now this wiring harness here attaches to a metal bracket. You can use a small pocket screwdriver. You're going to insert it into this little square opening and open up the little tab that is in there, unlocking it, and then grab, grab the harness and pull this up. That'll loosen the harness. Now the vacuum port that we had removed earlier, you can see it is clipped into the back side of the intake. Just grab that hose and pull that out like so. Now the wiring harness is held onto this bracket on the back of the intake. There's want to use, or I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and just push in on the little retaining tab. Come around the other side. I want to separate that from that bracket. So it's just a tab on either side here. And once you push in on those two little spring-loaded tabs, this will pop right out. There we go. Now that harness is completely separated from the intake. On the back side of the intake, we have a metal bracket and it's held on by a couple 10 millimeter bolts. I wanna go ahead and loosen and remove these. Be careful not to drop those bolts. Just trying to move that bracket back a little bit. Loosen and remove the 10 millimeter bolt here. that off and just kind of tuck that off. I'm going to put that bolt right back in there. Now running down our intake manifold, we have a series of 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm using hand tools here, no power. Just want to make sure we can break everything free first. here first. There really is no particular pattern on what you pull out first. And just my choice to go ahead and pull these two inner ones here. And then we'll just go around the front and pull those. Now there are two 
studs here. There's one here and one here with nuts on them. Sometimes the nut comes right off or the nut might come out with the stud. Go ahead and set these aside. Continue along popping these out. Now that we have our intake bolts and nuts loose and removed, let's see if we lift up on the intake here. Now when doing this here, you wanna be careful not to drop anything underneath the intake and into the engine. With the intake pulled off to the side, you can see there's one last vacuum hose on the back side. Simple enough. Go ahead and use your pliers. Move that hose clamp down. Give that hose just a little twist and then work that off. Now that we have that hose off, grab that intake, carefully lift that up and remove it from the vehicle. Before you go any further, be sure to put something inside the intake holes. You can use a good sized towel or shop rags. This is to prevent anything from falling down inside the engine while we service. On this side here, we have three ignition coils, one, two, three. We had to remove the intake to get to these units. Now I wanna go ahead and remove a coil. So we're gonna start by disconnecting the electrical connector here. There's a little pinch tab on there. And if you have limited amount of space as we do, you can use a pair of pliers to go ahead and reach down there gently, gently pinch the locking tab on that and wiggle that off like so. Use a 10 millimeter socket to loosen the anchoring bolt here for that coil. Remove that bolt, set it aside as we'll be reusing that. Grab that coil, gently twist and pull up at the same time. And there is your coil right there. Go ahead and take your coil and you want to peel the boot off down here. So just kind of roll this off here and take that down and pop this off. Go ahead and take the coil, slide that over. And if you just apply some forward pressure on this, normally these will pop right on. Kind of roll this edge over getting up and over the lip, and there you have it. You wanna go ahead and repeat this procedure for the other five coils. Now I put a little bit of dielectric grease on uh, the end of the boot and a little bit on the inside. We're gonna push this down in, line that up, install our 10 millimeter bolt. Just snug that down, grab that electrical connector, line that up, push it on. You can hear it and feel it click into place. Once that's done there, you're gonna repeat that process for these two over here, as well as the three on the driver's side. Now, before we install our intake here, carefully remove our towels or rags. We're gonna use some spray solvent on a rag, clean rag that is. And what we wanna do is clean the perimeter here. Wipe away from the holes. 
don't want to drop any debris down inside, but what we do want is a clean mating surface for our new gaskets. Repeat this process for all of these ports. Let's go ahead and bring our intake down and we're not going to install it yet on the intake because we have a vacuum hose on the back side we need to get installed. So you want to go ahead and position this. Again, bring this vacuum hose over. Push that on. Don't forget to move the hose clamp. Okay. Now with that back hose installed, you want to go ahead and maneuver this over. There were two studs on top of the lower portion of the intake, which are going to line up with the, with the holes on the intake over there. So we just want to position this and work this over. Now you're just going to be watching for hoses and electrical connectors and all that fun stuff. Go ahead and slide that intake down. Make sure nothing is bound up. Let's go ahead and install the two nuts on the studs. Drop these down inside. Gently snug those down. We're now going to go ahead and torque down our upper intake bolts and nuts here. Just follow along with the direction on this here. And this is going to eight foot pounds. This is a specific pattern. Now if you want to go ahead and repeat that one more time, just to double check everything, make sure that everything is evenly torqued, eight foot pounds once again. Once you're done with that, we'll go ahead and move on. Now on the back of the intake, you want to go ahead and bring that bracket up. Get this positioned on the top here. 
where we're two 10 millimeter bolts. Once we get those started, let's go ahead and snug those down. Once those bottom out, you're pretty good with that. You don't have to over tighten them because you're just tightening that bracket down to a plastic intake. Go ahead and take your wiring harness, push those little tabs back and through to secure that in place. On the back passenger side of the intake, we have our vacuum hose. Go ahead and push that onto the intake. Move that clamp over and into place. Further back here, there's just a little plastic retainer clip on the intake. Go ahead and pop that vacuum hose into that. Go ahead and install the two 12 millimeter bolts from the bracket to the front lower passenger side of the intake. And once you get these started, we'll go ahead and tighten those down. Once that bottoms out, just give it a hair bit more doesn't have to be super tight. You're securing a metal bracket to a plastic intake. So do not over tighten those. Install the two lower coolant hoses on the throttle body. Once you have those bottomed out, we'll just go ahead and get those clamps moved into position. Install our upper tube here. Tuck that in across the back, move our clamp down. And remove our bolt here. Same for this one here. Let's go ahead and snug these down. Once this bottoms out, just give it a little bit more. Let's go ahead and tighten down that rearward bolt. the electrical connector, I'll we'll plug this in. Go ahead and connect the throttle body here. Install our air intake ports here and slide these into place. Now on the back, we do have our 10 millimeter bolts. I wanna go ahead and start those in. Once you get those bolts started, we'll go ahead and tighten those down. Just snug those down until they bottom out. Now over here, we have our vacuum hose. Go ahead and pop this on. Use your pliers to go ahead and move that clamp over. Tighten down our hose clamps. We have two of them, one here and one over by the throttle body. Snug those down. Do the same for this one. Now we can go ahead and line up this upper cover. Snug 
goes down. And then the back side, just bump this down. There it is. Install the ground terminal and tighten down the nut here. Now at this point here, once we have this all assembled, you wanna go ahead and clear any codes if you have any on the inside of the vehicle. Go ahead and start it up, take it for road test, and at that point there, it should be all set. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.